Hello everybody, my name's Calvin. Welcome back to Universe Sandbox. You guys left a ton more suggestions, so we're gonna go through some more today. We got a suggestion on the last video saying, can you make the sun a hundred times bigger than it is today? And a swift reply from Huntman saying, no, a thousand times bigger. So let's do it. So let's, we're in the solar system here. So let's just try making the sun a hundred times bigger. Um, let's adjust the mass and make that a little bit bigger. Um, oh, okay, Mercury is getting pulled in and a lot of stuff are. So let's pause while we make this go higher. 100, okay. And we're gonna play and see what happens. Oh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars immediately sucked in. And then we got Hebe here also getting sucked in. Oh, Hebe launched out. So it looks like a lot of these asteroids are getting sucked in and either getting launched out or getting sucked right into it. Here comes Jupiter, so we'll see what happens there. Jupiter gets slingshotted out, um, and I think it's in an elliptical orbit now. Here comes Saturn. Saturn gets launched out too, so it looks like they're barely missing. So it looks like all of the gas giants are actually getting launched out. So there's Uranus, Neptune. Okay, Jupiter got launched so close that it's escaping the solar system now. So this would not be good for the solar system. So let's do the same thing, but a thousand times bigger and see if it can eat the planets this time. Okay, so we're back in a new solar system because we can just regenerate them at will. Um, and we're gonna pause and set this to a thousand times the mass of the sun. Oh, okay, that made it go supernova. Let's see what happens with this. Okay, I unpaused it and the entire game froze. Okay, so the sun supernovas, um, all of the planets immediately burn up, except for Jupiter and Saturn, they somehow survive. So that does, oh, and Pluto, Pluto survived too. So Pluto's basically the best planet. Okay, let's try it again and make it not explode. So I'm just gonna try to increase its radius first. Okay, well that's just eight Mercury, but that's okay and then set this to a thousand and okay okay so it's still paused but you can see how big this is jupiter is the first planet to not get eaten so as soon as i press play all of those immediately get eaten jupiter gets sucked in saturn gets sucked in here comes the other planets uranus and neptune uh pluto did not survive and here comes everything else. I'm pretty sure it's just gonna eat everything. There goes everything, and it looks like the sun is cooling down very rapidly and will basically die. So the entire solar system is now contained in this dark star. We got this suggestion that says, make the moon too close to Earth and let it get caught on its gravity and see if Earth gets rings. So basically we're gonna move the moon so close to Earth that the gravity pulls it apart and, and we're gonna see if Earth can get rings from that. So here's the Earth and here's the Moon. So I wonder if we can just grab the Moon and just put it here. We still want it to be in orbit so it can get close enough to um, break, but not close enough to run into the planet. So we'll see if this is close enough to start to get some tidal fragmentation. Um, it doesn't look like it. But at this level, the tides would be insane. We would get massive tidal waves. And okay, that'll definitely get close enough here at this back end to start getting ripped apart. Oh yeah, there you go. So you can see that once it passes this close section, it starts to get ripped apart. And it looks like we are getting some fragments coming off that could form into rings. So while it's right here, I'm gonna move it in even closer like this so we can get it to fragment even better. And we'll watch it fragment. If it does, maybe we need it even closer. I want to get it as close as I can without it actually running into it. Like that is so close. Look at the distance right there. You can see the size comparison between the moon and earth at this scale. I wonder why it's not fragmenting better. Um, I guess we'll just make it close enough that it starts to run into the earth and that'll definitely break it apart. There we go. Oh, okay. So we'll see if the earth can get rings from this. It looks like we have a couple clouds swirling around it, which is good. And it's hard to see, but I'm trying to see if we can find those fragments. Because it looks like there are some small fragments, but they're almost impossible to see. So it didn't really work. Um, but let's see if Earth survives it. Collision with the moon. Looks like we did, except all the land is covered in water except this little part. And all the vegetation is dead on it. 
so we would probably not survive, but Earth itself would. Okay, we got a suggestion from person from TDS. Give the Earth three more moons. We could definitely do that. It should be not even hard. So we got the moon orbiting here. So what other moons should we give it? Let's give it Ganymede as a moon. Ganymede is actually the biggest moon in the solar system. So we're gonna put it about right here. And let's also give it, let's give it Mars as a moon, just to see what happens. And then for our last moon, let's do Pluto as a moon. Okay, we'll see what happens. So now Earth has three more moons. It has Earth, and then we got Ganymede, Pluto, Mars, and the moon. So let's see what happens here if it's stable over a long period of time. Okay, so Pluto looks like got launched out. Um, so Pluto's no longer in orbit. The moon's orbit is getting messed up by these other two planets, but it looks like it's working okay. I'm just gonna speed up time really, really fast and see what happens. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like Mars is the only one left, but Mars stay, oh, okay. N none of them survived. All right, we got a suggestion from MSAW, MSAW, I think. Make white hole. Uh, we can try. So Universe Sandbox does have black holes. So let's throw in Sagittarius A, which is a super massive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. So here's that, and you can see the effect that a black hole has on light. And this is accurate. If you actually saw a black hole, that's what it would look like. And to make it white, we could try to do negative mass instead of a positive mass. Well, it worked. Let's also set its visual to white. So it's shooting out white light now. And so the theory is that white holes shoot stuff out instead of suck things in. So if we put an object here, let's put Jupiter still right here. It should shoot Jupiter away from it. Yes, see, instead of sucking it in, it shoots it away. So let's, um, I'm gonna add rings to this. So we got a bunch of rings going on here. It's getting kind of laggy, but as soon as I hit play, they should all shoot away from it. So let's see if that happens. Let's slow down time, okay. Um, there they go, and yes, it's like a ripple. They all get shot away out of the white hole because the m negative mass on it. That's pretty cool. All right, we did it. All right, we got a suggestion from Mustafa Hamadi. Make the biggest star in the game explode. The biggest star ever known is Stevenson 218, uh, which is right here. And this may not look that big until you compare it to the sun. Here's our star compared to Stevenson 218, and here's Earth compared to those two. So, Earth compared to the Sun compared to Stevenson 218. And let's make it explode. So, to get some scale, I'm actually gonna put the Earth one light year away. So the Earth is now one light year away from Stevenson 218. I wonder if it still is getting light on it. Uh, very dim. So it's still like lighting up the surface even though it's this far away. But now let's play the time and let's go to Stevenson 218 and we're gonna go to tools and explode and we're just gonna click on it. And this is a little bit faster than real time. We'll speed it up. And this is the supernova that comes off of Stevenson 218. Um, and Earth is all the way out here, so we're gonna speed up time and you can see that this supernova is gonna extend all the way out to the Earth, which is a light year away, and keep going. So I wonder what the is gonna happen to the Earth. So the Earth obviously freezes because it's so cold out here. Um, but yes, this supernova is now massive, many, many light years across. Um, you can see the radius right here. So it's 10 light years across about. So let's see how big it's gonna get. Okay, it looks like it stops right there at 4% the entire galaxy, which um, sounds like not that very much, but let's put the Milky Way in here. So here's the Milky Way, and that is how much space it takes up in the Milky Way, which is an insane amount if you actually think about the size. That's crazy. Jack Plays says, make a planet with a hundred moons. Okay, let's try it. Um, so let's add a star, put a star in the middle here. That'll work. And let's put a planet around it. We'll do a gas giant, because gas giants typically have more moons. So here's our gas giant. We're gonna name it Home of the Moons, and we're gonna want some cool colors on here. So let's make it um, red. Let's do a red gas giant. So I'm gonna start putting in some red color on the bands, and I'll see you guys when it's done. Okay, so here's a red gas giant, now with a little bit of yellow, and we're gonna add a hundred moons to it. So I'm gonna do it while it's paused, and then once it's done, we'll see if they all survive. So I'm gonna count, and we'll get through this. One, two, three, four.
100. Okay, there's 100 moons. Um, and if you turn on the orbital view, you can see how many there really are. I will be surprised if this is stable. Let's play and see what happens. It looks like they are shifting slightly. Okay, there was a collision there between two of them. Um, and in reality, that would cause rings. Okay, I saw another collision. Collision, collision. It looks pretty chaotic, so I'm going to speed it up as fast as it'll let me, and after a while, we'll see the status of it. wonder if any of them escaped. Yes, a, a bunch of them did, it looked like. But a lot of them are staying intact. Okay, so this is about 10 years later, and you can see the orbits on them are very chaotic, very elliptical when they all started very round, but most of them are still orbiting, and it seems like it would be pretty stable over time. So now what I'm going to do is increase the mass on this 100 times, and then watch what happens. So increase the mass and go. And they all get sucked into it and it, it lights on fire and it ate them all. And then the, all of these escape, so I guess they survive. We got a suggestion to terraform Earth. I got you, let me pull up the solar system. Okay, to terraform Earth, um, I think we're gonna have to add some water to it. It looks like it has a little bit, but let's add a little bit of water, probably about there. And then the atmosphere too, we'll check that. Um, let's adjust it a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, and I think we should be good there. Let's check its habitability. Oh, 97%. That's very good. Black Tiger 124 says, Hey Chip, try making Jupiter a red dwarf star by making it collide with other planets. It needs to be 80 times more massive. Let's try it. So let's pull up Jupiter. Jupiter is the biggest planet and we need to make it 80 times more massive. So we're gonna try to do it by only collisions. So we should just be able to launch Jupiter into itself, right? 80 times and that should work. So here's Jupiter and here's another Jupiter and they're going to crash into each other. Boom. Now we have a bigger Jupiter, which has about 80% more mass. So some of it gets lost in the, um, fragments but we're just gonna keep going like this until we can get it about 80 times bigger we'll see what happens whoa so we made it spin really fast so let's try to correct that spin I think okay we're about 15 Jupiters and we made it spin very fast like that so let's try to correct for that by launching it like this okay Wait, which way is it spinning now? It's like shooting. It's like, look, there's like two of them inside of each other. I don't even know how that happens. Whoa, okay, they just split. So it looked like they collided and then didn't. So what is this object now? So this is Jupiter and this is also Jupiter. This one only has 25% of Jupiter's mass, so we're not gonna worry about it. Oh, it looks like we've completely destroyed Jupiter's orbit by doing this. It's on course to just completely fly out of the solar system. Looks like the same thing is happening and they don't fully combine all the way. I'm just gonna keep doing this till it gets to 80 and we'll see what happens. 70. And it's a star. It's a star, pause it. Star, Jupiter's now a star. Okay, I'm gonna unpause and see what happens to it now. It's about 80 Jupiter's masses and it looks like we put it on a course to go straight through the solar system which is not very good, but now it's a star. I wonder if it'll ever cool down to not be blue. Yes, yeah, so the surface temperature is dropping after years and years. Um, so I wanna see what its final form is going to look like. Okay, so it looks like it's turned into a yellow star. Um, so that worked. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna see more Universe Sandbox content, leave a like on this video so I know you want more. Thank you guys so much for 25,000 subs. It came so fast. Join my Discord server. Anyone that joins before I get 50,000 subscribers will get a special role. And thank you so much to my patrons. Uh, we only have one right now, it's Borg. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, the link's in the description. Thank you guys so much, I'll see you next time.